Good morning or afternoon, whatever time you're listening to this. I'm on the beach, so you may hear some waves. And I want to talk to you about what's going on. I made a video on my Instagram about those that are going to be looting and rioting. And I have had the hardest few days, weeks, since George Floyd. I've never wept so hard for hours. For someone I didn't know. But the thing is, it hurts so much because I do know. And I've had experiences with police brutality and just listening to my own dad. Like, I have a deep connection, but we may not have a relationship. Either way, I don't like to hear when he tells me that police officers have put a gun to his back. Now, my dad works as a professor and a university endowed. And so it's quite scary that one day when he came back home to tell us that he may not have come back. It's quite sad. <laughs> Honestly, and I'm laughing because I'm very nervous. But what's happening with everyone posting on YouTube and not quite understanding when we say all lives matter is quite insulting or um, to see people say that this is only 0.01% of police. I wish this were the case, but I noticed things stopped helping my first Black Lives Matter march in 2016 when I was in Seattle. And I was very frustrated that all of a sudden these white people want to show up. I felt it was more insulting to have people come and be waving a sign Silence is compliance. You know, real action doesn't come from marching with people because it looks cool. Or you're fed up. It comes from everyday interactions. It comes from, what did you just say to my friend? It comes from dropping the n-word or saying, oh, well, my friend's cool with it. It comes from listening to music and feeling like you can say things like that and that you're entitled to some things that you have no idea how deep the cultural trauma and wound is. In my book, I almost, on the very first chapter, the first page, I wrote about my experience in Ghana and seeing visions of things that other people could not see or feel. I was seeing ships and women and loincloths. And I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, which is one of the scariest, most racist places of all. So for those of you who feel like it's really cute to go and be posting riots on Instagram or Facebook, this is not us. Those of us who have been harmed are not on the streets marching. Some people are, and that's the youth, and I appreciate that. But for those of you who have no idea what this is, this, this is anarchists coming in and doing it in the worst way in the name of us. The name of people who have suffered, causing more destruction, saying we won't tolerate this, in the name of people who have been hurt and that is the most disrespectful thing. Posting images and visions on Facebook is not helping anybody that you're trying to go and do marches for. Marching and putting a sign, Black Lives Matter, I love my Muslim neighbor, is just that. It's a sign. It's like a stop sign and not obeying it. People who really love one another don't have to put a sign or coexist. Tolerance. First of all, tolerance is, is just that. You can tolerate someone and you're sick of them. Or you can love someone and, and, and live with them. They're two very different energies. We have to be very aware of what it is that we're putting out there.
you have no idea how triggering it is to go and see white people say, oh, look, I was at the demonstration. They hurt me too. You know what? Shut up and sit down. Really. Ask somebody else how you can be of help or just stand with them. But your left hand does not need to tell your right hand what you're doing. And you're certainly not helping everybody else by jumping into an already violent situation and, and saying you're trying to defend people. Where were you when all of these things were happening? Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown. Where were you when all of these things were happening? All of a sudden you're mad today? It was cute when everybody was marching a few... A few. It just, it's just annoying. It's quite annoying. You have no idea how re-triggering this is for people who don't feel safe and you're just jumping in there. Oh, since everyone's there, I'm going to go now. Shut up and sit down and ask somebody what else you can do. And if you're posting it, it's only so you can feel like you can get a, a thank you from your white friends. People who really are hurt, you need to go and sit down and ask, how can I support you? People who really are hurt, you need to go and say, can you tell me some of your experiences? See how they're reacting to some of these situations. Absolutely, as, as if I'm not enraged, I'm, I'm so angry. I mean, I cried and wept. I've been beyond triggered every day for the past week and a half. And this isn't cute. But what you're doing is harming us more than it's helping. It's just, a, a, some people love assembly and I used to be like this. Oh, people are protesting in New York. We're the 99%. Oh, that sounds great. But what is that doing besides making noise? They haven't responded to that before, so we need to do other things. You need to find a way to use your white privilege and I'm, or any other form of way. But advertising that you do things. Well, I help these people. I donate shut up and sit down i mean do you want a cookie this isn't helping anybody ask people how you can be of service and every single person's experience is going to be different you're not helping you're hurting